Hey everyone, how's it going? So after being admittedly very surprised by how well Persian did, I decided to try another Pokemon that I thought might have a chance at surprising a bunch of us, and that is Dugtrio. Now on the surface, it looks like Dugtrio should be better than Persian. It is another fast, primarily physical attacking Pokemon, except it's even faster than Persian, and has even more attack, and even has more special. Unfortunately, one big limitation is its move pool. Persian had a pretty decent move pool. Dugtrio gets some good moves. I mean, it starts with Dig, which is base 100 power in this generation, but there's not a lot of variety there, and Persian did have that in its favor. Regardless, that shouldn't stop us versus Brock, since Dig should be all we need, right? Wrong. <laughs> I cannot believe how much Dugtrio struggled against Brock, and the reason is, returning to its stats, unlike Persian, whose defenses are at least decent, Dugtrio's are terrible. Its base HP is almost half that of Persian's, and its defense is lower as well, and that combination led to battles where the Geodude can knock out Dugtrio without even Onyx needing to get involved, and then if Onyx did get involved, it too, using Bide, was occasionally able to knock out Dugtrio. Of course, with enough attempts, you can win. A big reason for that is something we also talked about in the Persian run, critical hits. If you divide Dugtrio's base speed by 512, you get roughly 1 out of 5 of my attacks should crit. So, it's gonna happen fairly frequently. Nonetheless, it took many attempts to get by Brock, and then, after I did so, I lost to the Bug Catcher. I don't think I've ever lost to this Bug Catcher in my entire life. And I did. And that's how I knew that it wasn't worth it to be so underleveled. And I reset my game. This time, I decided to be a little smarter. There are two Bug Catchers in Viridian Forest, and there's no reason why I shouldn't battle them. In fact, it only takes about two in-game minutes to beat both these Bug Catchers, a very small amount of time, even in the most competitive runs. And this time, it only took a couple attempts to beat Brock, and the only reason I didn't win the first time was really bad luck with Onyx using Bide. It was extremely clear how valuable this leveling up was, and we also were able to get by the Bug Catcher and all the other trainers en route too, making our way to Cerulean City. And it is here that I started to realize this run might be more difficult, because the rival has a Pidgeotto that can't get hit by Dig, so the better bet was to battle Misty. Or so I thought, because once we end up hitting Misty Staryu with Dig, we find it does not one-shot, and that Water Gun does over half. In the end, none of this matters anyway, because as it turns out, at my current level, Starmie actually outspeeds me. So obviously, without absurd luck, this clearly was not going to work. The only option then was to battle Rival 2, and if we had Slash, perhaps this would have been easy, but we don't. We have base 35 Scratch, and it took many, many, many hits to knock out Pidgeotto. As you know from my previous runs, this Pidgeotto has Sand Attack, and this just was not working at all. Eventually, I decide to use Bide, which I hate using, and the reason will become apparent shortly. In order for Bide to work, I can only get hit twice. Three hits will knock me out at this level. That's somewhat problematic, because the rival only knows three moves, Gust, Sand Attack, and Quick Attack. Sand Attack has a 25% chance to fail, but realistically, we need to use Bide, it goes for Gust first, and then Quick Attack, and we get a two-turn Bide. It took me many, many attempts to even get one that was close, but it wasn't ideal. We did get hit with one Sand Attack. Spoiler alert, it won't end up mattering. We do miss against Abra, but Abra can't attack us. Rattata goes for Quick Attack, we do hit with Dig, and we don't one-shot Squirtle, it hits us with Water Gun. Upon seeing this battle, I realized this was not going to happen. We got basically ideal outcome, since the Sand Attack not only didn't matter, but actually boosted my attack. And yet, I would need a critical hit on the Squirtle, and the Rattata not to use Quick Attack twice. The odds of getting everything I need in one battle 
are not ones I'm comfortable with, even so early in the run, because there is an easy way that I could get around this. There were plenty of trainers I skipped in Mount Moon, trainers that could easily be knocked out by Doug Trio. And so for the second time, I decided to restart the run from scratch. Even though it's early and I only wasted about 20 minutes doing these two runs, I was disappointed. I expected Doug Trio to be a lot better than it's being. However, it will knock out a bunch of Pokemon rather quickly. So let's just show some key highlights from this run. I actually decide to battle the famous Light Years Junior Trainer in Brock's gym. And for the first time, I got a first try victory versus Brock himself. I also battle the Super Nerd in Mount Moon. He's got two electric Pokemon. They're both going to be one at KO, so it's going to be pretty fast. And I was really hoping with these extra battles, potentially Rival 2 would be a heck of a lot easier. And luckily, I was right. I mean, I did want to try and use Scratch and see if that would work. But as you're seeing, the Scratch strategy still really is ineffective. So Bide Strats are the way to go. And in case you thought I leveled up needlessly, I get attacked once, twice, and a third time. And while I only have two HP, I do survive three attacks. While that's not ideal, it's just one more pathway to victory. And the more pathways you have to victory, the easier a battle is. Obviously, I'm not worried about the Abra, but the Rattata can use Quick Attack. It thankfully does not. But of course, if we get hit by Squirtle once, we're done. All right, moment of truth. Ooh, we come very close to knocking it out, but the Squirtle survives on just a sliver of health and knocks me out. So if we got a crit, we win. But look at all the different pathways we have to victory. This is going to happen. Well, on the very next attempt, I almost get the ideal situation. We get Gust. We get a miss from Sand Attack and another Gust. Unfortunately, Quick Attack. So we're stuck with very low HP. A little bit more this time, but still not a lot. Let's just knock out the Abra real quickly. Rattata doesn't use Quick Attack. That's very good. All right, maybe it was a range. Nope, doesn't look like it. <laughs> okay, Tackle didn't knock me out. So... Obviously, I leveled up the perfect amount, perfect number of hit points. I don't know what to tell you. That's pretty funny. And we're going to move on. Thankfully, because of these extra levels, Nugget Bridge is easy as heck. That said, it would be ideal if I could beat Misty here, as opposed to having to come back after I do SS Anne, because that means I can battle Lieutenant Surge, who we know will be an absolute joke. Misty sends out Staryu like always, I go for Dig, no X defend, and we're able to knock it out in one hit at full HP. This is the first time I've actually seen Starmie in this run, I'm gonna go for Dig, it misses with Bubble Beam. I hit, it doesn't knock me out with Bubble Beam. Once again, leveling up on point. I mean sure, there are some who would hope for a fluky critical hit, or maybe even a Gen 1 miss. But as for myself, I didn't become the king of Generation 1 solo runs by relying on ridiculous strategies. I did it by repeating the same jokes over and over again and making videos that are far longer than necessary. <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm kidding. And this is as good a time as any to point out the very small minority who go to like Madry Bread and insult him saying J-Rose is better. I don't appreciate it. I actually despise it. We're not rivals. It actually helps me if he does well, because that means YouTube is going to recommend more Pokemon content, which obviously someone who does that is pretty good. So just wanted to get that out there. I see it every once in a while. And it's better just to stay positive. And trust me, I'm feeling pretty positive right now because it looks like Doug Trio is going to have a really easy time with the next segment of the game. Everyone's favorite TM is about to get acquired. TM08 Body Slam. And with Body Slam, Rival 3 becomes a heck of a lot easier than Rival 2. I actually forgot to heal, but that shouldn't be a problem. I go for Body Slam, Pidgeotto goes for Gust, I go for another Body Slam. Raticate, I go for Dig, I want the one at KO, and I knock out Raticate. Kadabra has pretty awful defense, so I go for Body Slam. And I hope I one-shot Wartortle, I don't, but I should be fine, unless the rival gets a crit. Now, unfortunately, I didn't actually have any super potions because I messed up, 
but realistically we should be fine i just need to battle the rival again and i am going to probably get a crit here and there so everything should be fine unless once again the rival gets a critical hit which for the record is way less likely than me getting a critical hit because gen 1 is gen fun but spoiler alert the third time was the charm I'm not gonna lie, I'm pretty irritated that Rival 3 took three times because it should have only been one. And yes, I probably should have healed. This is a big reason I use in-game time because if I mess up a little bit, it doesn't really affect anything and we get a more fair representation of a good Doug Trio run. But yeah, it's fine. It happens. Much rather this be frustrating than the Elite Four or something. Hopefully it won't be. Who knows? We got so long. But you know what's not going to be frustrating? Absolutely obliterating Lieutenant Surge. And I do wonder what branch of the military he was from, because if he's from the army, he's actually already at the lowest rank possible. And if he's at the navy, he should be demoted to Ensign Surge, because... I mean, if this is the way you zapped your enemies into paralysis... Yikes. No need to even really commentate what's going on. I obviously use Dig three times, I win. Very, very tense moments, I know. But after defeating Surge, it's time to head to Rock Tunnel and make our way to Celadon City. I decided to do the rocket hideout first, figured that wouldn't be too difficult. Once again, I'm not at full health, but it really shouldn't matter. We will use Dig against the Onyx and knock it out. We'll use Dig against the Rhyhorn and knock it out. Kangaskhan survives. And it also gets a crit and then knocks me out. But I can heal pretty easily. There's actually a super potion right behind Giovanni if you forget one. And with that super potion, Kangaskhan shouldn't be too much of a problem. After knocking out the Onyx again and the Rhyhorn again, this time around I don't get a crit. It goes for bite, does less than half, and I get a lucky crit with Body Slam. I actually ran out of dig. You might wonder why I didn't use PowerPoint up, but I'm saving it for my next move. I'd rather not waste it on Dig right now. And this is the first time that really came into play. Unfortunate PowerPoint management by myself, but definitely not the end of the world. And after defeating Giovanni, I decide to skip Erica for now because grass moves would not be good for a Doug trio. Instead, I'm going to go battle Rival 4 after having done some shopping. And one of the things we can get from that shopping trip is TM48 Rock Slide, which we can use to one-shot Pidgeotto, uh, assuming we were to hit, which we now do. 10% chance it misses, which is terrible, but we do knock it out, like I promised. We also can use it against Growlithe instead of wasting a turn for Dig, which is kind of nice. I actually meant to switch to Body Slam versus Execute, but you can see it wouldn't have knocked it out anyway. It puts me to sleep, which just wastes a bunch of time. But thankfully, I am able to wake up and knock out Execute. Kadabra still won't be much of a problem. I outspeed and one-shot. War Turtle. I'm hoping to one-shot, and I do, but with a crit. So would I otherwise? Who cares? I don't think I've ever had a run where Rival 4 was anything but easy. And so we're just going to move on. And it's at this point I need to make a little bit of a decision. Whether I want to battle Erika or maybe Koga or Rival 5 -ul. I decide with the ground Pokemon, Koga probably makes the most sense. I might be a little underleveled, but Dig should one-shot coughing, critical hit. Muck, it goes for minimize, and now I'm just not going to hit it. Oh, come on. Come on! Finally, and it doesn't knock it out. And it doesn't knock it out after all that. And, and now it's, oh my god, it's going to knock me out. I'm going to lose to Muck with the Doug Trio. I'm going to lose, I, I just... I have lost. Wow. All right, let's try that again. All right, coughing number one, and look at that. No crit needed to knock it out. Beautiful. This time it goes for poison gas while I'm underground. Please knock it out. It doesn't knock it out. No. But we do get body slam. All right, nice. Coughing number two is identical to coughing number one, so I expect an identical result, and I get one. Now, wheezing hopefully will self-destruct, and that would be nice. Unfortunately, we get X attack, but we get a crit. I'll take it. One out of five hits are going to crit anyway. I'll, I'll take it. I would have liked self-destructs. I always get a little bit of pleasure when they lose because of using self-destruct, since it is just such a horrible move for me. But 
Critical hits fine too. We have our fourth gym badge, beating the fifth gym leader. And now I had to make a choice whether I want to go to Blaine, because I have Surf now. But I don't actually have a water Pokemon, I get the Lapras and Sylph Company. So I might as well try to battle rival Fival. Pidgeot hits with Quick Attack and Crits, which is terrible. I'm actually below half HP. Rock Slide's doing about half, and I knock it out with the second Rock Slide. Just like last time, let's save the turn, go for Rock Slide, Growlithe down. At this point, I have Slash, which will crit 100% of the time, almost. It goes for Leech Seed and misses, and we're able to knock out Execute. I was nervous I wouldn't one-shot Alakazam with Slash. I decide to go for Dig. It'll do a little bit more, and especially if I get a crit. So it's just Blastoise remaining, which doesn't have Hydro Pump yet. I go for Dig, but it goes for Withdraw, which it can also use while I'm underground, so I don't do very much. It goes for Water Gun. And what the heck? What is with this frickin' War Turtle slash Blastoise and Critical Hits? Holy mackerel! We are just getting the worst luck imaginable. That was two critical hits against. So let's try again. This time, Quick Attack doesn't crit, and Rock Slide is still a 2 a KO. Thankfully, didn't go for Quick Attack that second turn. Way more HP now. Once again, we can one shot Growlithe with Rock Slide. I go for Slash against Execute, and this time it goes for Stun Spore. That's a reset. I want to see out of curiosity if I outspeed. I don't. And at this point, I'm just trying to see what's going to happen here. Alakazam's Confusion doesn't actually do that much damage, but yeah. Time for a reset. Alright, battle number three. So that's something else that can go wrong. And just like in the second battle, we get hit by a quick attack, but no crit. We get Rock Slide 1, no second quick attack, and Rock Slide 2. Here's Growlithe again. There goes Growlithe again. Alright, Leech Seed. That's fine. We can deal with Leech Seed, and we knock it out. I'm gonna go for Dig, I lose 1 16th of my health, this is why I wasn't too worried about Leech Seed, and we're able to one-shot Alakazam even without a crit, now is Blastoise. I decide not to let it use Withdraw and I go for Slash, which always crits, it goes for Withdraw. Crits aren't affected by Defense Boosts, so I go for it again, it goes for Withdraw again. One more Slash, should have knocked it out, the Leech Seed did matter! Oh no, no! <laughs> Wow, alright, so how many crits? That's now four critical hits from this one Pokemon in like seven battles, like three obvious different rival fights. Ridiculous, totally ridiculous. But on the slimmest of HP, once again, we do win. Thankfully, it went for Bubble and not Water Gun. Oh my goodness. And there is a Hyper Potion just outside this room, so that's okay. We don't have to worry about HP here. And this is a good moment to kind of take a breather and sort of look at where the run is. I mean, we had some setbacks early on, but we've been cruising for the most part. Rival Fievel looked a little difficult, but truth be told, three attempts, especially with some bad luck, it's really not that bad. The biggest problem was actually execute, at least so far. So I'm, I'm thinking this is pretty good. Honestly, I don't know why I show the Giovanni battle here. It's easy. We win. And at this point, I needed to decide where I want to go next. Because I now have the Lapras, might as well go battle Blaine, the Fire-type gym leader. Because I'm fast and use ground moves, so I think it'll be pretty good. Oh, and also, we have Earthquake now. It's on floor 10, but there's a rocket guarding it. Easily knock out Growlithe in one turn. Ponyta, easy one to KO. We do outspeed Rapidash, even though it has the word Rapid in its name. And we even outspeed our Canine, but we don't knock it out. Takedown! Woo, that does a lot of damage. But the Recoil is going to knock it out. Very, very easy battle. Although, I should mention that it's at this point I recognize Dugtrio probably won't keep pace with even Persian. Because while Dig is very powerful... Every time I used it, however, it cost me an extra turn over Pokemon like Persian, Mewtwo, Gengar that could usually knock things out in a single hit. That said, we're still absolutely cruising. And yes, I knew Erika still had to be battled. I was just worried about one-shotting her Pokemon. But at this point, I'm pretty confident we will. We one-shot Victory Bell. We even one-shot Tangela. I'm actually a little surprised by that. And we're easily going to one-shot Vileplume. So Erica was 3 up, 3 down. I think Sabrina might be 4 up, 4 down. I'm pretty sure she will be. 
Kadabra, we've seen a million times. Outspeed, knock it out. We outspeed Mr. Mime, we knock it out with Earthquake. I'm gonna use Rock Slide against Venomoth and thankfully don't miss. It's super effective, so might as well. And would you look at that? As predicted, four up, four down. Will Giovanni make it a clean 12 for 12? Only one way to find out. All right, Earthquake versus Rhyhorn. Easy. Giovanni's Doug Trio stands no chance against Jimmy. It's come a long way since the great Diglett fainting. And as we recall that fateful day, it knocks out the Nido Queen. It knocks out the Nido King, but it doesn't one shot right on. So we were close. 11 up, 11 down. Right on doesn't actually do anything to me. So we're able to knock it out as well. And that is eight gym badges fairly quickly. Not super, super quick, but fairly quickly. That said, I'm starting to get nervous because this is when the game gets more difficult. And this is when our options have started to run out because we don't have really any different moves to use. And while our opponent's Pokemon get a lot more powerful, we don't. And I actually had only 800 experience points until I leveled up. So I decided to go battle one of the backup trainers I always leave just south of Fuchsia City. It's perfect, just about 800 experience points. So if I do decide to use the rare candy when we battle rival six, we'll get one more level than otherwise, which seems pretty good to me. That said, I did want to try without rare candy, so let's see how it goes. All right, you know the drill. We use Rock Slide, it hits with Quick Attack. We miss with Rock Slide, it goes for Whirlwind. Well, that usually wasn't a part of it, but it's still a two a KO with one Quick Attack. Pretty good, just like Rival Fievel. The final Pokemon the Rival adds to his team is a Rhyhorn, which doesn't cause me any issues, so we knock it out. We don't have to use Rock Slide against Growlithe because we have Earthquake, three down. We do have to worry about Execute. After going for Slash, it goes for Stun Spore, and of course it hits. And then I get paralyzed as it's going for Solar Beam, and I lose. Great. Well, because of that nonsense, I decide the best way forward is to just use the Rare Candies. Maybe we'll one-shot Execute. Less chance of it using Stun Spore. Why not? There are literally six battles left. So, good as time as any, I would think. So, how much damage are we going to do against Pidgeot? All of it, but with a critical hit. That probably mattered. Still one down. Obviously, we're still going to one-shot both the Rhyhorn and the Growlithe, and now Moment of Truth against Execute. I use Slash, and I don't know why I didn't expect this to happen. Don't knock it out, Stun Spore. Amazing, now we're paralyzed, we're going to lose. Oh, we knock it out, nice. All right, out comes Alakazam, which will easily outspeed us. It goes for Reflect, and <laughs> okay. Critical Hit doesn't care about your Reflect, and now we just have Blastoise. Hydro Pump misses. It's got a 20% chance of that happening. I go for Earthquake. It's not going to be a 2 KO, especially not after Leech Seed. It goes for Withdraw. Oh my god, am I going to win? Nope, Hydro Pump hits. <laughs> that would have been pretty cool if I won while paralyzed, but doesn't look like this is going to be too, too bad. All right, so try number three. This time I'm going to Mimic, but unlike usual where I'm going to Mimic Agility for Badge Boosts, I'm going to Mimic Wing Attack, just in case that does more against Execute. Thankfully, Pidgeot doesn't attack me. And look at that, critical hit, one down. Obviously, we knock out Rhyhorn in one hit. We knock out Growlithe in one hit. All right, let's see how much this does to Execute. Oh, goodness, what a terrible idea. I knew it was base 35 power, but I didn't think it was that bad. Wow, that was really bad. Thankfully, it doesn't go for Stun Spore. We are going to be able to knock it out with Slash, meaning we're going to outspeed and one-shot Alakazam with Earthquake. Now we just need RNG, I think. We're gonna go for Earthquake. Hydro Pump misses, and we get a crit that may have mattered. So yeah, that's one pathway to victory for certain. In case you were wondering though, is this the most consistent way of beating the rival? The answer is kinda yes. I did wanna try again and see if badge boost glitching would be effective here. And the answer is yes and no. So I'm just gonna show you the battle where everything came together and talk about why it actually took a really long time to beat the rival again. You see, the problem with badge boost glitching, and for those of you who don't know, 
There will be a description of the glitch in the description. Essentially, anytime you use a stat changing move, all your stats are boosted just by a little amount. The problem with doing that is you need a Pokemon to set up against, and none of them are really good to set up against. It's not good to set up against Pidgeot or even Rhyhorn. They can attack you. And then you're at too low HP to matter because you're not going to knock out the Blastoise in one hit. Instead, what you're hoping is being at full health and surviving a Hydro Pump. And it actually takes quite a few badge boosts to do that, and you can only use agility three times. If you set up against Growlithe, you might have noticed you used the Leer. While it does lower defense, it also raises my other stats. And this will help once we get to Blastoise, but the other problem is that Execute is still not a 1 KO because critical hits ignore your gains. This is something that modern Pokemon doesn't do. If your times to an attack and get a critical hit, it stacks. Not in Gen 1, it's an either or. And so it's always going to be a 2 KO, so Execute would ruin a lot of runs. I would have too low HP, but... With enough badge boosts, you can survive a Hydro Pump, assuming it doesn't crit, that also happened one time. But yeah, it's not super consistent, which is why I didn't want to go into a lot of detail. I actually nearly won the exact same way as the first time, it just survived on 1 HP and got another critical hit, which is really funny. But yeah, but you guys know me, I don't like fluky battles and I only do these runs once, so I do want to see what would have happened in an alternate universe where things had been a little different as long as it doesn't take too much time, and this didn't. But with all that said, that battle was somewhat difficult. It took many attempts to get a consistent strategy, or semi-consistent. That worries me, because what are the Elite Four going to look like? Agatha will probably be easy, but what about the rest of them? Only one way to find out, but I'm going to tell you right now, I'm not overly optimistic. And the one I'm most worried about is Loralee, which is pretty unfortunate. I go for Rock Slide and get a critical hit. That probably helped a lot. One down. I go for Rock Slide again, and yeah, that's not doing anything. Clamp. Oh, it misses. 30% chance that happened. Another Rock Slide. Retroactive Super Potion. <laughs> okay, this is craziness. So I actually do have a plan going forward. Slowbro has two moves it can use. It can use Withdraw or it can use Water Gun. I'm going to mimic Amnesia to try and boost my defense, which is what the move actually still does today. All right, so it hits with one water gun, and I know this is kind of risky. It's just 50-50. After I go for three amnesias, I'm going to start attacking. It is using withdraw. It's being good, and you can see now as I start attacking, water gun's barely doing anything. It's going to be a three hit KO with slash. Are you kidding me? It's the slowest Pokemon, and it got a crit. This is why I don't like this. This is why I don't like this, and... Wait a minute. How lucky did I get to even get... Oh my god. I got so lucky on the first two Pokemon. Let's try this again. This time I don't get a crit. Oh my. Come on. Yeah, this is not gonna... <laughs> okay, yeah. What? Oh my. And what am I really gonna do here? Rock Slide is the strat. I don't have any special moves. Duck Trail was actually very decent special. If it could learn Thunderbolt, that would probably do a lot more damage versus Cloyster. And before you say that would make no sense, Rhydon can learn Thunderbolt, so there is precedent, but Dugtrio, in fact, could never learn any move like that still to this day. And there's only one solution, level up. There's no other solution, what am I going to do? The craziness of that first battle is not going to get repeated. 20% chance, a miss, like come on, that was so incredibly unlucky, and we still lost. We didn't even get to Lapras. If we didn't one-shot the Dugong or the Cloyster, we're not going to one-shot Lapras, which knows Blizzard and Hydro Pump, which are going to one-shot me. And because Loralee herself is so hard to beat, we can't do what I usually do, which is just level up against the Elite Four over and over again, because we can't level up if we can't knock out Pokemon consistently. It's not fast to do that. Instead, we're going to have to go to Victory Road, tons of high-level trainers, but I'm really, really regretting not battling more trainers in Blaine's gym. I didn't think it would be this bad, and this is going to cost me a little bit. So I had to spend a bunch of time leveling up, and unfortunately that's going to take Dugtrio out of the running for one of the best Pokemon. We can still get a pretty solid time, assuming my leveling up, my vitamins, allow me to defeat Loralee semi-consistently. I go for Rock Slide, Aurora Beam's still doing too much. I bought like five Calciums. This isn't working, guys. I get a critical hit versus Cloyster and it just knocks me out with Aurora Beam. We're at level 60. 
This is bad. Now, usually I don't like to just brute force luck, but I wanted to see what would happen after Slowbro because we've never even seen Lapras yet. The first thing we're going to need is a run with a critical hit against Dugong. We get that here. Now, we don't even get Ideal Luck versus Cloyster. We hit with the Rock Slide. It hits with Aurora Beam. I miss with Rock Slide. It misses with Clamp, and I get a critical hit. Ideally, it would have missed with Clamp, and I'd be at full HP, but we've made it past the Cloyster, which is good. I go for Earthquake right away against Slowbro. It's looking to do about half. It goes for Water Gun. I knock it out with Earthquake. Jinx is terrible defense. So it'll be knocked out in one hit, and now the Lapras is here. I go for Rock Slide. It's looking like it's doing under half. It misses with Hydro Pump. I go for Rock Slide again, and apparently it's a range. So we do knock out the Lapras. This is taking me a long time, and you might think I should be happier, but the truth is, it was so luck-based. It's hard to feel too accomplished, but at the very least, I get to see what the rest of the Elite Four will have in store, at least until I lose, if I lose. That said, I'm not anticipating these next two battles being anything but extremely easy. Let's see if I'm correct. So, Onyx, one a KO with Earthquake. Hitmonchan, not one a KO. Oh no, counter! Except that's not how it works in Gen 1. It only counters normal and fighting moves. Poor Bruno, he actually would have won, and that pretty much should seal it. No, we knock out Hitmonlee in one hit. We knock out Onyx number two. Machamp likely will be a 2 KO. Oh, it actually goes for submission. We survive. As I expected, not too big a deal. And if anything, Agatha is going to be even easier. Because other than her Golbat, every single one of her Pokemon is going to be a 1 KO. Don't believe me? Here's the battle. Gengar number 1, 1 KO with Earthquake. Golbat, critical hit 1 KO with Rock Slide. Haunter, well obviously if Gengar was, Haunter will be too. Arbok will be as well. And even the mighty Gengar number 2 cannot withstand an Earthquake. So we've made it all the way to Lance. And Lance is where I thought the run might stall again. Because Lance has a Gyarados and this Gyarados is absolutely a nightmare for a lot of Grounder Rock Pokemon. We know Rock Slide without a crit is not going to one shot. So we're essentially hoping for a 20% chance of a crit or a 20% chance for Hydro Hump to miss. Oh joy. All right, I go for Rock Slide and I miss. And of course, Lance misses too. Great. Well, at least I hit here, but even worse, I got the miss I needed and I couldn't do what I needed to do. Hydro Pump easily knocks me out. Yikes. What are we going to do? Honestly. Do you know how high I need to get in levels before I knock this thing out in one hit? And there is a chance I could eventually level up high enough where Hydro Pump won't one-shot. I think that's what we're going to have to do. So now we're at level 65, and I'm going to mention this was not my first attempt at this level. There are some positive things that are happening, though. Rock Slide does put Dugong in range to heal, and Lorelei can do that, which makes it a 2 KO and means I don't get attacked by the Dugong. Rock Slide is now doing over half, and Clamp misses, which is good, so we actually make it to Slowbro at full HP. I decide to go for Mimic Amnesia strats, since I have a lot of HP, and I'm very nervous about Lapras. Unfortunately, as you're going to see in just a few seconds, I'm actually going to get the dreaded Generation 1 miss, a 1 in 256 chance that your move misses when it should not. Because of that, I'm at a little lower HP than I'd like, 94, but I should be able to survive a Hydro Pump or a Blizzard, at least if it doesn't crit. Jinx, of course, is going to be a 1 KO. Moment of truth, we hit Lapras. Well, it misses. But let's pretend that would have worked really well. I, I was proud of that strat, but unfortunately... What am I saying, unfortunately? Fortunately, I guess we got lucky. And for the first time in a little while again, we've made it back to Bruno. Now, since we're at a higher level, Bruno will be even easier. We already saw Bruno was easy last time. This time, the only major difference between this battle and the previous one is that Hitmonchan should be a one-hit KO, which it is. And we can actually take a bit of a breather since there isn't anything Bruno or Agatha can really do to us at this point. And this is one of the things I like about Generation 1 so much, is that every trainer can be really easy, but the later ones, everyone can be very difficult, except Bruno, never Bruno. 
But Agatha is usually very difficult. Lance sometimes is an absolute joke. Laurel is sometimes an absolute joke. It's kind of great that we have this diversity between our runs. So it's never really getting stale. Every run has a different point that can be really, really annoying for a given Pokemon. And as we defeat Agatha again, we've made our way to Lance. In the last few videos, Lance has been an absolute joke, but he's anything but. We pretty much are hinging on either luck or surviving a Hydro Pump. I don't see another way to do this, so let's get right to this. Moment of Truth Rock Slide, critical hit. All right, we're in business. Earthquake, one shots versus Dragonair. That means we're also gonna one shot the second Dragonair. Aerodactyl, please one shot. No, Hyper Potion's okay. All right, so close. That's what I was scared of. Ooh, no crit, pretty good. Uh, Aerodactyl gets a lot of crits. All right, we've knocked out Aerodactyl. All comes down to Dragonite. If it uses Hyper Beam, we're gonna lose. This is not gonna one hit KO. <laughs> okay. I mean, listen, it happens. Fast Pokemon are good for this reason. We've made it to the champion. Bit of a fluky victory versus Lance. I will take it. Champion is going to be difficult. Rival 6 was difficult, but I have an idea. It may not be the most consistent strat, but I think this is going to work. If it does, I'll feel amazing. If it doesn't, we just have to make it back one more time, and I'm sure it will. I won't hype it up anymore. I'll show you when it happens, but let's do this. I go for Rock Slide. Pidgeot goes for Sky Attack. Not going to risk the 10% chance of missing. I go for Slash and knock it out. Alakazam will probably be a 1 KO. It is with Earthquake. Two down. I don't know if Rhydon will be a 1 KO. It isn't, but Leer misses. And we knock out Rhydon. Our Canine will definitely be a 1 KO. And that's four down. And here's where the strat comes into play. Gonna use Mimic. Gonna Mimic Hypnosis. It doesn't go for Hypnosis itself. That was pretty key. Better use Hypnosis before Executor does. I miss. It hits me again. All right, we put it to sleep. Slash is doing about half. It stays asleep. We're fine. All right, now we just have to put Blastoise to sleep, and we win. Our hopes rest on a 60% chance. Here it goes. We miss. And Blizzard, maybe we survive. We don't. Ah, uh, that really sucked. I mean, what can you do? I actually didn't use an Elixir so I could keep the levels up, and that will make the rest of the Elite Four even more consistent. The truth is, we obviously could win at this level, but I actually think I deserve to keep the levels and make the rank worse. And let me explain why. You're seeing a successful battle versus Laurelie. There were four more before this at level 70 where I lost. My win rate versus Laurelie is still incredibly inconsistent. And while I can live with that, our last battle versus Lance was also incredibly luck-based. We came very close to knocking out Aerodactyl, a few more levels we probably do. I don't love needing everything to go right, and a lot of things did go right that last attempt. Listen, at the end of the day, while I like trying to be scientific comparing these Pokemon, it's difficult when you only have one attempt each. So when I really think about the rankings, I think about my overall experience, I think about things that could have happened, did happen, and even things that may not have, but could have resulted in the run being a lot worse. For example, if I hit that hypnosis, the run ends, but we easily could have missed it, and now we have to retry again, and like I said, I lost a few times to Laurel still. In my opinion, all these things count against Doug Trio. The run is right now inconsistent, and as we make it back to Lance, I'd like to see a battle that's far less reliant on clutch critical hits, and is something that is far more likely to be replicated by one of you trying this yourself. All right, this time we don't get the critical hit. We do get hit by Hydro Pump, but we survive. All right, so we have to do everything at 35 HP, meaning Aerodactyl can't hit us. We knock out Gyarados. We knock out Dragonair number one. Also Dragonair number two. And here's the moment of truth. This should be a one hit KO. It is a one hit KO. And now Dragonite, please. Oh my. Okay, barrier is good, so we're going to win, but essentially it's a 50-50 chance, I think. Well, I mean less, because Slam and Hyper Beam can both miss. Thankfully, Slash allows me to bypass that barrier. But yeah, still not totally consistent. 
And Pokemon like Golem or Rhydon are going to have an absolutely miserable time versus Lance. But for now, we've made it to the champion the second time. You know what I'm going to do. I know what I'm going to do. Is it going to work? Let's see take two. All right, so Pidgeot, I'm going to go for Rock Slide. We know it doesn't one shot. This time it goes for Mirror Move and it hits me with Rock Slide. It actually does pretty fair damage. We're going to knock out Pidgeot though. Next is Alakazam. We're going to use Earthquake and we're going to knock it out. Next, Rhydon. We're not going to one shot unless we get a critical hit, which means we will one shot. I was wrong. Three down. Arcanine, we will one shot. We don't get a Gen 1 miss. Great, that's four down. And now, moment of truth. Gonna mimic Hypnosis. Doesn't put me to sleep turn one. Please hit. We hit. We should be good. We go for Slash. Waking up shouldn't matter because we knock it out. All right, guys. Here's the moment of truth. Can we put Blastoise to sleep? Yes, we do. That should be it. All right, how much is Earthquake gonna do? <laughs> Everything! We got a critical hit. We didn't even need to put it to sleep. Why didn't I just go for the 20% crit chance? Uh, well, I mean, listen, you can't hope for crits. And I know I don't sound as excited as I usually do, because I'm going to be honest with you guys. I'm disappointed. I'm really disappointed. I thought Dugtrio would absolutely destroy. I thought Earthquake, starting with Dig, I thought it was going to be fine. I didn't realize that Gyarados would be as big a problem as it was. I thought Rock Slide would KO much sooner. Regardless, it was a good run for the most part. We have a bit of an awkward situation where our time and our level don't match up as well with the rest of the tier list. I don't feel comfortable putting in the same tier as Beedrill or Hitmonchan. I'm far more comfortable putting it in the Moltres tier, and this is why I'm happy I have certain tiers of one Pokemon, because each tier does indicate kind of my general feeling where the S tier Mewtwo was totally in a class of its own. The A tier pretty good, but struggled a tiny bit. The B tier typically had a trainer or two that could be really tough. I might've had to try quite a few times, but overall we're pretty good. And then we get to the B drill tier. That tier struggled with at least significant parts of the game. And then Poliwag and Moltres kind of are in between those two things. Poliwag was able to do it minimum battles, but with a little bit of struggles. And Moltres, not quite that good, but still, quite a bit easier than things like Beedrill. So I'm pretty happy putting it in a Moltres tier, and I'm hoping you guys enjoyed my explanation of the tiers a little bit. Maybe at the end of this, we'll review our tiers and see if we can find some similarities between them all. I have a lot more videos to make, though, because if we're going to get through all 151 Pokemon, I mean, I'm going to already have to get back to work. So that's all for me. Glad you enjoyed the video. Take care.